So all my training, everything that I did in third gen, learning how to properly manage EV values, learning how to breed the Pokemon to get specific abilities, learning what, uh, what traits I wanted my Pokemon to have, all of that led up to fourth gen diamond and pearl but before we talk about that make sure you guys are hitting that thumbs up subscribe if you guys are new don't forget about my giveaway that i have going on every month for a year of playstation plus i, I that's the giveaway that we're doing guys i'm sorry but leave a comment down below with your favorite memories of pokemon as we celebrate 25 years of pokemon because 25 years is a long time 25 years brings a lot of memories. So we're going to talk about fourth gen, and this is going to be a long one because fourth gen did something completely new. Fourth gen brought in the age of the internet. It brought in Wi-Fi and being able to battle each other without having to connect with any IR sensor, without any link cables, nothing. You add a friend code, you're connected to your Wi-Fi and battle. You can battle, you can trade, you can participate in global events, in special events to get special Pokemon, as long as you logged in at the right time and clicked download gift from Nintendo, Nintendo could give you special Pokemon during that time. This was something that we couldn't do before. You had to go to a special event to be able to unlock special items, special keys, or uh, to give you a special ticket to be able to go to special island or whatever to encounter uh, a Mew or Deoxys or anything like that. Now we had the ability to go to a GameStop, download Pokemon from GameStop. We had the ability to go to, uh, to, go to a Walmart, a Target, we had the ability to go to Toys R Us when that was still around. We could just be at home and there would be a Nintendo event and be able to download a Pokemon that way or get a special item to be able to go encounter the Pokemon. All of those things we now had access to. We also had access to forums. And now we could battle random strangers on the internet and taunt them with voice chat as we entered into the biggest competitive uh the the biggest competitive aspect when it came to pokemon because now the doors were wide open i could fight people in japan i could fight people in germany i could fight people in canada in south america in australia didn't matter i could fight people all over the world i could go post on a forum and I'm going to name a couple forums right now. And if you guys are, you remember these forums, I want to know down in the comment section. There was Cerebi forums. There was Maryland forums. There was Smogon. There was, um, uh, I think there was a forum on GeoCities too, or NeoSeeker. There were forums everywhere. Everywhere. So with the ability to do all of this now, and at this, at this point in my life, I had moved away from Miami. I could still battle and trade my, with my friends back in Miami using, you know, online, like having them on the friend code and all that. I could just call them and tell them, hey, you want to battle? And then we'll go ahead and we'll battle. I first discovered the Cerebi forums. And on the Cerebi, it was Cerebi.net, which I think, I think I'm pretty sure the website's still around. So on the Cerebi.net forums, which I just checked right now, yeah, they're still up. Uh, and actually, you can even search my name in Cerebi forums. Just type in Goshen into the search bar and I'll pop up there too because I was very active back then. Um, so during the Diamond and Pearl era, which by the way, in my in my Pearl, I don't, know, I don't have it anymore. But in my Pearl, uh, I had well over 500 plus hours in that just because of the constant battles that we used to do on both the... Uh, Sarah B forums and the Maryland forums uh, both of those forums they we had leagues and in both of those forums I was a fire gym leader uh, specifically more so in Maryland I was more active in the Maryland forums but since since my time there Maryland forum has completely changed they've revamped the forums uh, 
the old posts are no longer available there. I checked too. The website's still up or the forum's still up, but the, uh, the old posts from when I was there, which who at this point was, this was back in 2008. Uh, I think is when diamond and pearl came out. Might've been before that might've been 2006, uh, 2007. No, 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 no. Cause I was already living over here. Um, so 2008, I was still in Miami. We moved up here in 2009. So I, it must've been 2008. Um, so anyways, I, I was very active in the Cerebi forums and, and, and in the Maryland forums. Uh, I found the Cerebi forums first, uh, and using the Cerebi forums, we were, I, we were able to, uh, to see where you could get certain Pokemon, which Pokemon had certain EV values to be able to train your Pokemon properly. Um, you could see the different egg moves that Pokemon were able to get. There was a lot of information in the Cerebi forums. Combine that with Smogon. Uh, now you have the tools to, to be able to make certain tier level of Pokemon. So you had different tiers. You had the Uber tier, which usually were for the legendary Pokemon or Pokemon with stats over a certain, uh, certain uh, rating. Uh, you had uh, OU, which is overuse tier. You had um, underuse tier, which is uh, UU. You had never used tier. Then you had baby tier, meaning that like you use unevolved Pokemon. Uh, so there were a lot of different ways to compete and just have fun. So like you would post on the forums uh, what the rules were to fight against you, meaning like, okay, we're allowed to use Uber Pokemon only or, or overuse Pokemon only. If you use an Uber Pokemon in the overuse tier, then you're going to be disqualified from the match. Uh, so things like that, it was, it was a very interesting time. It was, it was something that we got to have a lot of fun with. And this was also during, um, this was also early, uh, during early stages of YouTube. I think there might be like one or two videos of me playing against somebody, uh, in Pokemon. I think maybe from, from my fire gym, I think somebody up, might've uploaded, uh, they're challenging my fire gym. Now we had specific rules even when it came to challenging the gyms, because the whole reason uh, that we did the gyms, which you had the different gyms for the different types of trainers. And, uh, and then you would challenge the elite four once you got a certain amount of badges. So I think because at that point there was a lot of different types. Um, we, we made the rule was you have to have, I think it was 10 badges to be able to challenge the elite four. Um, and then if you were a gym leader, you had the option to give a prize out. So I would actually give out, um, I would give out trained Charmanders that had Dragon Dance and, and Thunder Punch. Those were, those. that was like my specialized, uh, because I was a fire gym leader, that was like my specialized thing. It's like, you defeat me, I, I will go ahead and, and trade over to you a, uh, a newly hatched um, Dragon Dance Charizard with Thunder Punch. Uh, with that also had um, Jolly as uh, as its trait because Jolly uh, what Jolly would do is give you a higher uh, speed stat uh, without affecting uh, your attack because you had different types of, of traits you had timid which would give a higher speed stat but uh, give you a lower attack stat. So having Jolly on a Dragon Dance Charizard means that you're going to be raising that Charizard to be a physical type um, or use to use physical moves. So, so, uh, so then you would want that faster. You would want that higher speed to be able to get a dragon dance off. Um, so it, it was one of those things that like, I, I would give that away. I would give away, uh, um, Vulpix with, uh, with energy ball. So I would give either a timid or a modest Vulpix, um, with energy ball modest boost, the special stat. Uh, where timid, like I said, boosts the speed without affecting the special. Um, and then if you also could have like an adamant uh, Charmander, which would be raising the physical stat and lowering the uh, special stat. So, so yeah, we, we did things like that. And, uh, and then each gym would also have a specific rule uh, if they wanted to, to do sp uh, specialized rules. So for me, for fighting a... A fire for being a fire gym my rules were you were not allowed to bring in stealth rocks if you came into the fight and you use stealth rocks then you're disqualified from the match and the reason why was because stealth rocks would give fire types an unfair advantage uh in the in the battle 
because Stealth Rocks being a rock move, when you switch your Pokemon, Stealth Rocks automatically did 25% damage to fire types. Uh, if you threw in a fire flying, such as Moltres, uh, Ho-Oh, or Charizard, then it would take away 50% of your health. So it gave an unfair advantage in the fight. So I banned the Stealth Rock moves from my gym. You were not allowed to use Stealth Rock. Um, every other ability was fine. That was the only one that was not allowed in my gym. Uh, also, I I also put you're not allowed to... to well, no, actually, I didn't say that. Um, one of the ways that we would prevent people from bringing in like a full water team to fight the, the fire gym is you had to register your Pokemon ahead of time to, before you challenged the... Uh, the gym uh, before you took the Pokemon League challenge is basically what we said. You had to register your Pokemon ahead of time, meaning you were allowed to register eight Pokemon, six as your mains, two as your subs. And the reason why we did that is so that you don't get an unfair advantage when you go into a gym or put yourself in a disadvantage. Meaning if you came into my gym with all water types, yeah, you'll, you might be able to beat my gym easy, but then you go and you fight a grass gym or an electric gym then you're pretty much screwed and you're not going to be able to win so it made it so that way you can try to cover all your bases with the eight pokemon that you're allowed to have when you're going to challenge the pokemon league on cerebi or maryland i think we implemented those rules more so on the maryland forms than on the cerebi forms but it's kind of a given on the cerebi forms that you're not gonna i think on the cerebi forms is where i implemented the rule you're not allowed to bring all water types like make this a challenging fight let's have some fun so, you know, I, I had a lot of fun with that. And then being a fire gym, yeah, I did I did lose a good amount, but I won a lot too because there was a lot of Pokemon that I had that people weren't expecting. Uh, most people were not expecting a Dragon Dance Charizard with Thunder Punch because uh, most of the time at that point, people tend they tended to build a, uh, a, a Charizard that was based around special attack if they even carried Charizard at all. Because Charizard was considered an underused Pokemon because of its weakness to Stealth Rock. But because Stealth Rock was banned in my gym, it gave me a bit more of an advantage to be able to surprise people with my Charizard. And I typically, you know, in, in gym fashion where you go and you fight a gym in the games, their strongest Pokemon shows up at the end. In typical fashion, my Charizard would show up at the end and basically start sweeping teams because they, they weren't expecting it. Or I made sure to take out all the counters before I threw my Charizard out to be able to sweep the teams. And it was a lot of fun. I I was able to make an, an Arcanine that was super tanky. Uh, that was very difficult for people to, to take out right away. And and so I gave I gave my Arcanine a... Um, it, its moveset was a, a very unique type of moveset. It had Substitute. It had Roar, Will-O-Wisp, and Crunch. And the reason why I gave the gave it that set was because I just had it be a tanky, uh, a, a tanky Pokemon. And Will O Wisp, not only does it inflict burn, but it also when when the Pokemon has burn on them, their attack stat is lowered. I think it was by fifty percent. So they're not they were not able to break through my substitute, and so. I made the my hold item on my Arcanine to have leftovers. So while my substitute's out, I'm getting my health back so I can do another substitute. And Roar was there in case I had to fight a stat booster. Because every time you use Roar, it pushes the Pokemon out, switches them, and and all the stat boosts are gone. So if they use the, uh, a, uh, an ability to raise their attack or raise their speed or defense, or whatever, that's now gone because I just roared them away and I didn't have to worry about that. So... I, I had a lot of surprising stuff like my nine tails would have hypnosis and energy ball. Uh, it was it was just a lot of fun to be able to do stuff like this and, and kind of think out of the box to be like, OK, if I'm running a fire gym, what am I going to do to protect myself against water types? What am I going to do to protect myself against rock types? OK, I'm going to run a blaze again with focus. Uh, no, with with fo not focus. Sash. Um, uh, which there was a there was an item that basically. Uh, gave you an, an immense boost in your speed stat, but you're locked into one ability. So uh, if I was fighting a rock type, then I'm like, okay, here's my Blaziken. And I'm going to go ahead and use 
um, you know, a fighting ability and basically take them out before they can take my Blaziken out because my Blaziken's faster. So it's things like that. Like you just, you think outside the box and it was just a lot of fun to be able to do that and encounter so many different teams. I was also an Elite Four member on the Maryland forums. And that was fun because then they go and they're like, oh, you're the Elite Four leader? I was like, yep. And like, okay, sweet. I, and so they would think in their head, oh, I beat you before because, you know, your fire gym. And then I'm like, oh, but I'm not using fire Pokemon as an Elite Four member. So, yeah, let's have some fun here. So I, I would throw out my Elite Four team, which was uh, full of, uh, with, uh, it was full of OU Pokemon, like overused Pokemon, like Electivire. Um, and, and it was, there was a lot of strategy. You throw an Electivire, uh, if somebody uses a, a, an electric move and Electivire gets a speed boost. I used Yan Mega, which had speed boost on it. Protect, get a free speed boost. Hypnosis, they're asleep. And then I just hit them with, uh, uh, with Bug Buzz or Air Slash to get flinches off of them. There was a lot of strategy. And it was so much fun to be able to just constantly uh, encounter new things. So then it's like, oh, okay, I lost on this fight. Now I, I know what to do so I don't lose on that type of uh, matchup again. It, it was so much fun. I had so, so many good memories during that time, especially when I moved over here because I was away from all my friends and everything like that. And it was, it, it was, it being able to play online for the first time was incredible. It was incredible. And it just added so much value to it. And, uh, and then Pokemon Black came out. So I guess we're gonna have to talk about Gen 5 in another video. Man, these are, there's a lot of videos. 25 years of memories, I'm telling you. And we haven't even touched Pokemon Snap, Pokemon Coliseum, Pokemon, and, uh, um, Pokemon Stadium. Like, there's so many things we haven't touched yet. Oh, man. There's gonna be a lot of videos. A lot of videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you guys are new. Get on to the next video. I'll see you soon.